What is going on guys? This is Jake from Fishtag and today we're talking about a pretty cool app called Ubersicht. I probably pronounced that totally wrong, but it's made by a German developer. And this allows you to put HTML5 and JavaScript widgets on your desktop in macOS. It's pretty awesome. And it's just a really cool way to make your own computer unique from everybody else and, you know, give yourself some, some spice. If your friend sees that on your desktop, they'll be like, yo, what the heck? That is so cool. How did you do that? And so we're going to go over um, how to do this, what you need to install, um, the files that you'll need to edit, and we'll teach you how to do all this stuff so that you can do it yourself and, and understand it. Now, I only have two widgets on here right now. One of them is this iStats widget, and then there is this calendar. One of the things that I actually really like about this, this, uh, these icons is, is they are animated and they do switch with what your fans are doing. So if I put this on full blast with max fan controls, you'll probably hear that the fans are kicking up and then you'll see that it actually does it on the desktop. I just think that is so cool that it is animated with what is actually happening with your computer. And it's the same thing with the CPU. The more CPU you use, the fuller the circle gets. And same with this battery icon. So props to the developer of that. That is pretty awesome. So I'm just going to set that back to automatic so you don't have to here are my 6,000 RPM fans on my MacBook cooking machine over here. But nevertheless, let's get into how to actually do this stuff. So in order to get all of this up and running, we're going to go over to the Ubersicht website. And you're just going to click download. I'll have this link in the description. Once it's downloaded and installed, you'll get this thing in your menu bar and you'll be missing all of these widgets. But that is okay. We're going to go click get widgets and it's going to bring you to this page. Now I like to filter by downloads because that's going to give you the most popular ones. So hit the downloads button and this will give you some pretty awesome widgets. And I'm, I'm telling you, don't even bother with any of the wedger, weather widgets, the wed, the wedgets. <laughs> They're not going to work. It's it's very unfortunate because they are beautiful and I want them on my desktop, but you won't be able to get them. And that is because 90% of them use the Dark Sky API. And if you didn't know this, Dark Sky was actually just bought by Apple. But unfortunately, that means that they're not taking any, any more signups for their weather API. And the other 10% of the weather apps uh, use either an expired other API that isn't working or it just doesn't work. So yeah, that's one of my goals is to make a weather app that actually does work. So from there, this is the calendar that I got. It's very nice. I like it a lot. It's very simple. You just download it, download it to your desktop, open it up. You're going to unzip it. It just unzips so you can delete that and you can delete that. So uh, open it up, you'll see an index.coffee. So these files that we're working with, they are .coffee files, and you can just open them up with any old text editor to adjust them if you want. So I want you to click on this little icon. You're gonna open the widgets folder, and then you're going to, I'm gonna have to actually rename this just because I already have the calendar in there, so I'm just gonna name it calendar two drag it into your widgets folder. Now, if we go look at our desktop, there it is. It's right there. That's great. It's a little different from my calendar over here because I did make some adjustments to the file to get it to position differently and adjust its size. So I'm going to take you through how exactly to do that right now. You're going to want to go to your widgets folder go into calendar two, and I want you to right click this and click open with other. Now you're gonna need some sort of text editor to open this. My, I usually use PyCharm, but you can just use text edit. Everybody's got it, it's super easy. It's gonna pull this up and we'll expand it for you. Adjusting these files is not very difficult. If you know basic HTML and CSS, it's gonna make it a lot easier, but we're gonna go through, it, it's, still, it's still super easy once you learn exactly what you have to do. So in order to 
change the positioning. Generally, all of these files are gonna have something that's like style, or it'll say positioning. And you're just gonna to wanna to go there and you can see that the bottom, it has a bottom and a right. So for us, I'm actually gonna move this onto the second desktop so we can see what's happening in real time. So basically what these means is these are the margins that are gonna be used between the bottom of the screen and the right of the screen. So it's got 10 pixels off of the right and 10 pixels off of the bottom. If I wanna increase that, let's say I want it 100 pixels off the bottom and save, you can hit Command S to save that, you'll see it jumped up. You know, if you wanted it at the top, you could say top zero pixels, save it and you'll see it jumps to the top. You can use top or bottom, it doesn't really matter. It's just the where the measurement is being made from. So you could say top 500 and it's gonna drop it down 500 pixels from the top. So you could you, you know do a ballpark estimate of how big your screen is and whatever. And it's the same thing on the right, right or left. You could make it you know 150 pixels from the right and you'll see it jumps over. So it's really not that difficult. You just gotta be able to find where in the file that is. And it's always gonna be labeled as like style or positioning. And you'll always see these top, right, left, bottom. And that's how you will know that that's what you wanna edit. Now you can edit the color of the graph if you wanted. Um, you know, you'll, you can find any color code that you want to use and pop it in there. You know, if I wanted to use something that's like, uh, I'll, I have a color picker in my Chrome. So, you know, I could really use it on anything like that blue. So if I want to copy that to my clipboard, I can come in here and just hit Command C, bring it back over here and pop it in the color, hit Command S, and there you go. You'll see that the majority of that turned that blue color. And the reasoning for why everything didn't change is because there is another color being used to make those other numbers gray and such. So if we wanted to, we could go through and we could find exactly that. I believe that that would be right here if we wanted to change that color, that gray color. That's how you would do it. And this dot today is the background color. So it's got a 0.2 transparency. Yeah, so if I make that a one, then it's gonna turn fully non-transparent. But I'm gonna change that back to 0.2 because I like the transparency and you'll see it goes back to normal. You could change all that. For me, I like the white, so I'm just gonna go back to FFF, all lower cases, and we got the white back. I also went in and made mine uh, a little bit bigger. So if you guys wanted to do that, bigger or, I guess you could make it smaller as well. What you're gonna wanna do is, there are a few things. The first thing you're probably wanna gonna, gonna wanna do is change the font size. So if you come down here, this is going to say 12 and you know, you could change that to 16, save it up, and you can see that the font size was increased, but only for the numbers. We're gonna have to find the um, the days, and then we can also do the May 2020 title as well. So as you're scanning through this, you can also see that it each of these numbers has a padding. So if you want to make the graph spread out more, then you can change the padding in between each number. So if I wanna take this from four to 10, boom, you can see that now it's a lot taller. I could take this from six to 16, and now it's a lot wider. And so that's it's a pretty neat way. It's not too difficult to um, adjust things as you're going. So with a little searching, you can see that in this same area, we got this font size that says 24 pixels. If we increase that to 30, I believe that's going to be the day uh, or the, uh, the month up top, and it is, so let's make it huge. We got that, yeah, we got that 60 pixels wide, and then 
this font size should be for the days of the week and we want huge days. So <laughs> there you go. Now this looks kind of a little ridiculous and a bit off, um, especially this circle, circular oval. Um, if we wanted to change that, we could go into this uh, border radius of today and we could make it something like 25%. And, you know, see, it looks a little bit better, but still, you know, a little bit strange. So that's everything for the calendar that you're going to need to make adjustments to it. So I'm just going to close out of this, and then I'm actually going to go into my widgets folder, and I'm going to delete that calendar too, because I already have my calendar. Now we can talk about this iStats widget. There are a few things that you're gonna need to do in order to get this working. It's not very difficult and it doesn't take too long, but we're gonna have to type some commands in the terminal and, uh, and you'll have this up and running in no time. So you can open up terminal with command space and type in terminal and that will open it up. Um, your terminal might look a little bit different than mine, that's perfectly fine. You're still going to type in the exact same things that I type in. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to type in, and this is only if you don't have Xcode. If you have Xcode, then you don't need to type this command in. And this is because we're gonna need some, um, some of the command tools that Xcode gives you in order to get these, the system information from our system. So if you don't have Xcode, then you're just gonna type in Xcode dash select space dash dash install and then you can just hit return now for me i already have it installed so it's just going to give me this error command line tools are already installed and that's it so that's going to go through it's not going to install the full xcode just the tools and after that's done you can then type in sudo gem install I stats and you can hit enter on this once you hit enter it's going to ask you to type in your passcode for your computer type that in and then hit enter again and then I stats will install in order to check if that worked out okay you can then just type in I stats and hit return and you can see some pretty cool stats which is um, it returns some system information that you get and it's just a, it's a neat thing to have. So from there, we have everything installed on the terminal that we need or on our computer rather. And so we can go over and um, hit the downloads button to sort this by the most popular and we can select this iStats widget. From there, just click download. It's going to download to your computer. I want you to unzip it. I'm going to delete that file real quick, open up your widgets folder, and I'm actually going to have to rename this just because I already have it on there, but now ah, I missed, dang it. Um, there we go, into the folder, the widgets folder, and you can see it pop up right here. It looks a little different, it's gray, that's okay, and it's a little bit smaller, Totally cool. I'll show you how to adjust these things right now. So this one is um, a little more involved because it does have some animation and, and some other things. So it's going to have some more files. So if you open up your iStats.widget is what yours will be called. You'll see icons.ttf, index.css, the index.jsx, and this src stuff. We don't need to go into the SRC stuff, but we are going to want to open this with your text editor of choice, and that was the index.jsx. So we will open up our text edit, and we get the index.jsx to come up. Now again, this is, uh, it's not too difficult as long as you're looking for the right things to make adjustments to. So you can see, um, pretty much anything and everything that we're going to want to adjust is at the top of the page and it's labeled exactly how it should be. If you would prefer the temperature to be in um, Fahrenheit, then you can type F and just hit Command S and 
you can see right here that it says 146 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm actually going to change the color so that we can all see it right now. It's 666. I'm just going to type in FFF to make it white and so much easier to see right there. And you can see that 146 F. Um, you know, Celsius is cool, so we're going to change it back to Celsius. And then moving this thing around, um, it's going to be the same thing. You can see that the stat position is right here. Um, we don't want to adjust the width or height and the radius unless you're looking to increase or decrease the size of this. But the widget position, we have it top 320, left 14. You know, let's say we wanted to move it to the the top right of the screen. So we could say top is zero pixels and the right is also zero pixels. And we hit command S and it went to the top left. Why did it go to the top left? <laughs> Not a problem. We'll just type in left and hit command save. See, that doesn't make any sense. But that's okay. If we type in 1400 pixels from the left, boom, you can see it go all the way to the right. That's just eyeballing based on what my computer screen size resolution is. It's about 1400 pixels wide, so you can just shift it over. And that's basically all you guys need to know for adjustments and stuff. If you want to adjust the width, um, you know, you could change this to 150, whoops, and save it. And you'll see, oop, now we got to move it. Let's see if we can do 1200 pixels. And wow, that made it really wide. So we're going to just make it a thousand pixels. And there you go. It is all there. Give it a little bit of space from the top just because it's bothering me aesthetically. And there's just so many stuff that you can play around with. You can make uh, whatever you want. Definitely go through the widgets itself themselves. Stay away from the weather widgets. I know it's annoying. I'm going to see if I can make my own. But, you know, there's some other cool stuff like this play box. You know, there's some now playing widgets. There's other calendars, some nice aesthetically pleasing stuff. The other thing that I tried to get, there are these to-do lists. And that I think that would be so cool to be on your desktop. And it makes so much sense to just have it on your desktop because it's a to-do list and you see it all the time. But, uh... It's like every, it's like the weather. None of them work. This particular one, Wonder List, literally was just transferred or just acquired by Microsoft on May 6th of 2020, which was like a week ago or whatever. And it's, uh, so it doesn't work anymore. You can't, you can't get Wonder List anymore. It's a Microsoft application now, which is, you know, it's unfortunate, but it's how it is. And then, you know, pretty much the other, all the other to-do list tasks are just not working. So um, that's the other thing that I'm going to try to make is a to-do list a widget and a weather widget so that we can all have some super cool stuff. But that is pretty much it. That's all I have. If you guys enjoyed this, please let me know. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you didn't like it, uh, just give it a dislike and explain uh, in the comments below why you didn't like it and consider joining the Touch Bar squad. Uh, I have my subscriber count uh, updating on my Touch Bar. So whenever somebody subscribes, I get a plus one notification on there. It's really cool. Shout out to the 391 of you that are currently out there. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, Post them down in the comments. I will do my best to help you. I'm always, always perusing the comments. But that's it. Peace.